In this video, we're going to talk about metabolism, anabolism, and catabolism. So what is metabolism? Metabolism is the total of all chemical reactions carried out by an organism. Metabolism is the sum of these two things, anabolism and catabolism. Now you might be wondering, well, what are these two things? What is anabolism and catabolism? Anabolism refers to processes that build up molecules. So an anabolic reaction would be like a, a synthesis reaction. Catabolism refers to the process of breaking down molecules. So this would typically encompass decomposition reactions. So let's say if you're converting small molecules into large molecules, that would be an example of an anabolic process. Now the reverse is true for catabolism. If you take a single large molecule and break it down into many small molecules, that would be a catabolic process. And so that's a brief overview of anabolism and excuse me, <laughs> anabolism and catabolism. So just keep that in mind. Metabolism is the sum of those two processes. It's the sum of all chemical reactions that are carried out by an organism. So let me give you an example of an anabolic reaction. So let's say if we're combining glucose molecules. I'm going to put dot, dot, dot because we're combining many of them. And we're going to make a large molecule. This is an example of an anabolic reaction. I messed that up. Let's do that again. So glucose is a monomer, and we're combining many glucose units to make a polymer. So this would be a polysaccharide. So we're taking many small molecules, and we're building it up to form a large molecule. So that would be an anabolic process. Anabolic processes typically require energy. And because they require energy to make it work, this is an example of an endergonic reaction. So anabolic processes typically uses up energy. So they're endergonic processes. They typically require ATP to make them work. Now, this is an example of a dehydration synthesis reaction. To make this polymer, water is going to be released. And anytime you have a synthesis reaction, it's going to be an anabolic reaction. Now let's talk about catabolic reactions. It's simply the reverse of anabolic reactions. So let's say we have a disaccharide, sucrose. Sucrose is composed of glucose and fructose. And we're going to use water to break this molecule into its components, glucose and fructose. So this will be an example of a catabolic reaction because we're taking a large molecule and we're breaking it down into smaller molecules. Catabolic reactions typically include hydrolysis reactions, as in this case, which is a type of decomposition reaction. Many, or excuse me, most hydrolysis reactions typically release energy. And so this would be an exergonic process. So catabolic reactions are associated with exergonic reactions. Now let's work on some practice problems. Identify each process as an anabolic or a catabolic process. So cellular respiration 
Is that an anabolic or catabolic process? What would you say? Cellular respiration involves converting sugars like glucose and uh, reacting it with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. This reaction is not balanced, but it releases energy. But if we were to balance it, we're taking one glucose molecule, reacting it with six oxygen molecules to make six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules. So notice that we're taking a large molecule and we're breaking it down into many small molecules. Plus the fact that it releases energy, it's exergonic. So these factors tells us that cellular respiration is a catabolic process because it involves the breakdown of a large molecule into many small molecules. Now let's move on to number two, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the reverse of cellular respiration. We're taking carbon dioxide and water and using light energy to convert this into glucose and oxygen gas. So we're taking many small molecules and building it up into a large molecule. So that would be an example of an anabolic process. Now what about number three, glycolysis? Is that anabolic or catabolic? The word lysis tells you that it's catabolic. You're breaking something apart. In glycolysis, you're taking a large glucose molecule and you're breaking it into two smaller pyruvate molecules, or really pyruvate ions. And so you're going from a large molecule to smaller molecules. That's going to be a catabolic process. Now, number four, converting amino acids into proteins. Amino acids are the monomers of proteins. So in this case, we're taking many amino acids, which I'm going to write A for amino acids, and then we're going to combine them into a large polymer, which could be a polypeptide or a protein. Either case, we're taking many small molecules and forming a large molecule, either a polypeptide chain or a protein. So that would be an anabolic process. Number five, converting nucleo excuse me, nucleic acids rather, into nucleotides. Now, what you need to know is that a nucleic acid is the polymer of nucleotides. So a nucleic acid like DNA or RNA, it's a very large molecule. And when you break it down into individual nucleotides, these are small molecules. So anytime you go from a polymer to a monomer, that is a catabolic process. So that's how you can determine if a process is anabolic or catabolic.